Greetings programs, welcome to The Grid, I am Sark and today's game is Translucent Materials in 3D Studio Max. We're going to set up our white grapes today, or our green grapes, I think I'm going to make them green, uh, using subsurface scattering and to simulate the way, uh, try to simulate the way that light moves uh, through a translucent surface. So uh, I want to change some rendering settings. So just F10 to open your render settings menu. Make sure that we're on a draft quality render, like 15 is probably fine. And uh, we're going to increase our noise filtering, and this is going to reduce uh, the detail in our image. It will reduce our image quality, but we're going to get a much faster image. Noise filtering is very, very cheap, and we're going to get a clear idea of what's happening with our lights and our colors. Um, so these will be quick renders. Like if I press the render button now, um, I think it should be less than a minute. And just about done. So you could see we lost a lot of detail here. It still looks okay. Like the paint effect is kind of still working, but the, the wood grain has definitely lost a lot of detail. That's okay though. This is a relatively quick render, so we're going to go with that. So closing the renderer, uh, we need to select all our grapes, right? Uh, all the ones that would be would be the desired color. So if I recall correctly, it's like this one, this one, this one. Oh, better better to hide everything else, right? Hide that, hide that. We can delete this spline. We're not using it anymore. Uh, these other splines we'll have to be a little more careful with. Hide this. Hide the peach. Okay. Um, if you go to your select by name, we need to select all of our splines. I don't want any translucent materials on the lines in the scene. So anything with a name uh, that is line, in my case it's line 03. So from line 03 I'm going to hold the shift key and select down to line 09 and hit OK. There's our little spline network to simulate our vines. We right click and hide those. Okay. So I think it was one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. These are the grapes that are on the table that are the lighter colored ones. And now I'm just going to gonna select as many of these as it sort of makes sense to that feel like they're on the same bunch. I feel like that's about it. Um, you know, maybe maybe this one, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that one for, for the other color. So these are going to be our green grapes. I'm going to open our material editor. I'm going to wait for it. Uh, M to open the material cutter. Uh, the material editor. Press the M key uh, if you don't know where to find this. Uh, if yours comes up in a different mode, I'm just working in the compact material editor. Uh, it's just a little easier for me to show other things off, but you could use the slate editor if that's what you're more familiar with. Pretty much all the same tricks. Okay. So we'll call this um, green grapes. I know they're like champagne white grapes in the image, but I've never seen those in my entire life. I've never seen those for real. Maybe if you're in Europe, you've seen them. So I'm going to make grapes that I have seen in the grocery store, <laughs> right? And that I have touched and eaten. Because uh, in that way, I'll at least know what I'm looking for. I'll, I'll be able to intuit, uh, the, intuit the color and the shape and stuff. Um, as they say, make what you know. This is what I know. Um, so the color of our grapes is going to want to be green. So again, we're using our physical material. Uh, this is a great tool for this because it has a subsurface scattering function. So I'm going to go to standard, then I'm going to choose physical material. I'm going to assign this one to these grapes. And I'm going to change the base color to like a green color. That's like a grapey green. Um, I want to flip this to an advanced material because we are going to use some reflections. Um, I want to actually put a swirl on this. Click here where the map is, and instead of instead of I'll borrow this grapey green, I guess, because it's it's pretty good. But instead of using that color, let's 
let's have like two colors sort of mixed. Um, not those two colors. <laughs> we'll paste one of these in here. And we'll have the other one be... I kind of want to swap them. Part of me wants to just like swap which one is which. Yeah. Uh, but this one is going to be like a much, much lighter... Um, leaning towards yellower, whoa, too yellow, and much, much more desaturated. Yeah. Okay, that's what we're going to go for. Color contrast, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 1. One's too much, you know, we don't want that. Uh, 0.5 is probably about where I want to be. And did I make this like too... I'm afraid I made it too desaturated, so we'll come back here and saturate it some more. Saturate this a little more. Okay. Um, swirl intensity, I actually want that at 2. That's fine. Swirl amount, I'm going to reduce that, um, I think, to like 0 0.5. And I'm going to set the twist at 0.5. And I'm going to set the constant detail to 8. Maybe take the swirl amount back to 1. I think that's fine. Um, so we can, we can change this up if it gets too silly. But I just want my grapes to have a little bit of um, personality. Each one should look a little different. And since they've all been rotated different ways, they've already got their maps on them. This will do the job on that. Uh, roughness should be a little bit, right? Uh, maybe like 0.1 on this. Reflections. I want to leave the reflections at 1, but I want the reflections rougher. Uh, 0.3. This represents like the way they fog up a little bit. And no metalness, but I want the index of refraction relatively low. Something like 1.1. Yeah. I don't want them too refracty. 1.33. Nah, like 1.1. I really don't want them too crazy there. We're going to do other things. We're going to put a clear coat. Uh, Alright, transparency. We need to have, like, maybe... Not a lot. 0.15 is as high as I think I went when I was playing around with this earlier. We can unhide all our other objects now, I guess. Um, we need a depth. I'm going to set the depth to... 2. Uh, not going to make them thin walled. Subsurface scattering. We want to turn this on, and we actually, in the case of a grape, uh, realistically simulated grapes, this should be all the way on. Uh, they're they're one of the most like transmittent of light of any object. Uh, it just goes straight through them. These are the wrong colors, though. So we actually want, uh, in this case, like a pale green. So we'll go back to our pale green color. Um, we don't want to make this too dark or too light. So I think that's it's a slightly paler color than our than our default material. I think. That's that's going to be too dark, right? I don't want to saturate it up. Okay, there we go. And. Yeah, I really want this to kind of be light. And then for the depth, I'm going to use a very small amount, like 0.3. And for the scatter color, I'm going to choose something that's almost like a mint green. I don't know why I got the idea, but maybe, maybe more blue light slips through, right? Like I know they, I know they absorb like all the darn red red light. Uh, green will basically be black but a grape will basically be black. But maybe a little green light slips through, a little blue light slips through. Okay, so let's try that and see how our grapes turn out. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> so here goes a render, F9.
They get a little pale there. But that that looks gorgeous. I mean that that's absolutely what grapes do. Um yeah, this just seems a little funny, right? So maybe Maybe do that a little bit. And we could take the subsurface scattering down a little. Like down to like 0.85. This is probably not what is realistic, but sometimes you don't want to override that too much. Uh, it might be our reflections too, so this render. Let's take our reflections down to like 0.3 and put our subsurface scattering back up. See if that helps. Whoa. No, it's definitely the subsurface scattering. It's just a little too much for it. So maybe I choose too bright a color for that. So I'm going to take that back down to like 0.85. Um, I guess our reflections can go back up a little bit, 0.7. Um, man, I could get like... I could get like more saturated with this. I don't feel like that feels right though. Let's try it. Yeah. Right, that, that turned it into a cartoon. So this is a really, really powerful effect, and you just have to... You just have to make sure you're not overdoing it. I, I think the goal is to have this color slightly lighter than this color in an ideal world. I, obviously, this color doesn't matter because I'm using a swirl. So slightly lighter than the aggregate of your swirled colors. All right. That's actually pretty good color-wise. I'm happy. And um, when these render, and when they finish rendering at higher resolutions, you will see that they they do a really nice job of behaving um, like believable objects and not like plastic objects. Oh, speaking of which, we do need a clear coat. Um, I'm going to set the clear coat to what? Uh, did I take down settings for that? Of course not. So, uh, I'm going to set the clear coat to 1. I'm going to set the roughness on it. Um, 0.2. Effect underlying, sure. Roughness, 0. And I'm going to have it be 1.33. Which is, which is water, right? So, this should give the impression that the grapes are a little wet. Let's see how that works. Oh, they got a little darker, too. Ha 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 ha. Right, because earlier I was doing my settings with my clear coat. So I think I can take my subsurface scattering back to 1. And I get away with it. Let's see. It's always nice when, when the things that you're told are physically real match up with your scene. Yeah, my grapes didn't turn didn't turn pale this time. So the subsurface scattering definitely goes back up to one. And there's a little anastrocipity on that, so that works out for us. And maybe they're just a little bright, you know, like with that clear coat, so we could even increase the roughness of the clear coat. I'm going to try like 0.35. Yeah, I just wanted to soften those up a little bit, because they shouldn't all be like Again, I don't want plastic-looking grapes. It's very hard to, to make a uh, translucent surface, like a, an organic fruit-type material, and have it not look plastic when you're doing 3D work. Um, okay. I feel better about them. I feel really, really good about these grapes. And that should be just about it for today. I'm going to... 
I'm going to tweak some things. Uh, coming up, we're going to work on this peach. I want to tweak some things about this, this wood surface right now. Uh, it's been bothering me a little bit. So, wood grain. I'm going to go in here. Obviously, at our current render settings, we can't see everything that's going on with the wood grain. But I'm going to set this base color to black, just to remind myself that when you put a lesser value here that you get. Um, yeah, even even though there's a material there. Um, and I want to I want to drop this down to like 0.7. And I think that's just going to give our wooden table back some of the darkness of our scene. Yeah, looking a lot less washed out. Uh, and easier to see the bright paint on it. So that's helpful. Uh, and then I want to move this paint around. I don't, I don't like its current location. So I'm getting fussy about that again. So I'm going to go back to my plaster that I'm using for a mix map. And uh, conveniently, we still have it set up so we can see where it's going and what it's doing. I'm going to turn the angle back this way again. And I'm going to offset the U-tile until these paints on this edge sort of look like they're, they're being wrapped off that edge, right? Let's try this. Quick render there. Yeah, I think that I think I like that better. I think I like that there's some some paint splatter up that way. It just makes the whole surface a little more believable. It felt like there was only one place where there was paint, and that was kind of strange. Um, it is a little messy and muddy up there, but I kind of don't mind. Also, I'm doing a very very low resolution render. So the last thing you probably want to do is set your render quality up to like a high render quality, you know, maybe like 40. And then take your take your filtering way down, maybe like 25%, because once you once you're doing that higher render quality, uh you don't need the noise filtering as much at all. Also, uh it won't kill as much of your detail anyway. Uh just because uh the, you have more pixels, the pixels are smaller. And then go ahead and allow yourself to do like a 1920. Make sure this is still locked to your aspect ratio, 1.26230 in the case of my image. Do like a 1920 by whatever it is. In my case, 1920 by 1500, and let that render. Now, if I press this button, I'm probably in for a good, you know, 10 or 20 minutes at minimum. So. Um, I will press it and let it start, but I probably am also going to stop recording now because I don't want this video to be too long. All right. You guys have a great weekend. Good luck. Have fun. Oh, yeah. That's going to be quite some time. Do we let it? Let's just let it go for a little bit. Yeah. All right. So already some of my details coming back, and that that's going to be a bit though. That's going to do like 50 or 60 passes. That is it for today.